Hi, welcome. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm an accountability coach for creatives and my business is called Accountability Muse. Today's episode is going to be another get ready to create with me. If you're not sure what that is, you can go ahead and check out last week's video, which I will link above, where I go into much greater detail about what getting ready to create with me is. Today, I have more work to do on Rose City Swing. Since we last spoke, I have done even more work on the outline, which is like, hell yes, I'm excited. Um, if I refer to my Airtable, I'm actually quite pleased with my progress so far. So um, at the end of last week's Get Ready to Create With Me, I kind of mostly fleshed out Act 1. And at this point in time, I have mostly fleshed out Act 2, including, spoiler warning, a character death. Yeah, I'm gonna kill somebody off. It's like the best part of the job of being a writer, getting to kill characters off. Satisfying. I need to keep on trucking and work on kind of like wrapping up Act 2 and starting to flesh out Act 3. Today, my resistance looks like exhaustion. In case you're curious, I am speaking to you from the past on Wednesday, November 27th, 2019, the day before Thanksgiving. And I, in my family, am in charge of the noms. Today, I have to make the mashed potatoes and the stuffing and prep all of the veggie shenanigans and butter shenanigans for the turkey tomorrow. Basically, I do a lot of prep work every time I'm in charge of Thanksgiving, so that way on Thanksgiving Day, I have less work to do. But that means the entire week of Thanksgiving, I'm doing a lot of cooking and cleaning, which makes it really hard to also do other things that are important to me, like work on this YouTube channel, work on my business, do client work, work on Rose City Swing that has a deadline swiftly approaching even though it's when I set myself. But again, the event is only at the end of February. At this point in time, that's not that far away. And I'm scared. <sighs> so, my anxiety has lessened because I've been making really good progress on the outline so far. However, today, I am lacking in time and energy. <laughs> I am exhausted and I still have a lot more cooking to do today and I'm going out dancing tonight because if I don't dance, my mental health suffers. So today, I'm only going to set a timer for half an hour and work on the outline. And I know I talked about the timer thing last week a little bit, um, but uh, really it helps so much, especially like when I'm tired when I'm not very motivated. It can help when like my depression's really getting to me. Um, Cause again, the goal is to just try until the timer goes off and then when the timer goes off, I can stop. And what that really means is that even if I just sit and stare out the window or stare at the screen, as long as I am trying to move the project forward, in that period of time, when the timer goes off, I have accomplished my goal. I want to repeat that because it's like really life-changing. Even if during the entire half hour while my timer is going, if I am just thinking and trying to think through what's next and trying to move my project forward, when the timer goes off, I get to stop because I have met my goal of spending the time. Now, um, this becomes really revolutionary across a long span of time of using this method because A, you tend to like lower your expectations for any given work session. B, any project is gonna have dead air in it somewhere, especially creative projects where you just have to think and process. And while it might not look like much is coming of that thinking, the thinking still needs to be done. So like, 
some examples is when I was drafting my YA fantasy novel, um, I would have whole days where like my button chair time would go by and no words would go down on the page, no ideas would be solidified. It would be really frustrating, but I gave myself permission to have writing days like that. And I would often find that the next time I sat down to work, I would be able to produce. Like, I needed to go through that hour of just thinking in order to be able to move forward. So it is productive and it's really helpful on days like today when I'm tired, I'm strapped for time, but I know I will be better off if I put in at least a little bit of effort on my project. So that's why the goal today is half an hour. So yeah, I don't want to. I'm tired. Like really, what I want to do is I want to stop this recording and go lie down and watch YouTube videos or read a book. That sounds fantabulous. But I made a promise to myself this morning in my journal that I would do at least a little bit of work today. So I am going to fulfill that promise to myself and get to work. I'll be back afterwards to uh, tell you how it went. 30 minutes, let's go. And we're back. My timer just went off. I did 30 minutes of work on the Rose City Swing outline and it was actually kind of hard to stop when the timer went off today, which is interesting because Practically, I didn't make that much more progress on the outline. I needed to finish fleshing out Act 2 or Saturday night of the Rose City Swing event and then move on to Act 3. However, today, because I'm so low energy, I ended up kind of doing what I was talking about before, where I just did a lot of thinking. And uh, I knew I wanted to finish off Saturday night of the event, Act 2, with a musical number, um, just like I did last year. I have a like good idea of what I want the musical number to be Friday night, but it's going to involve a mashup of a lot of different songs, and so that's going to take some dedicated work, but it's not quite as relevant to the outline, like I don't need to have that answer down for the outline. Um, so I can worry about that next month when I'm actually writing the script. However, for the end of Act 2, because it's the last, like, night of the event where everybody's together, because usually Sunday night, half the people of a dance event have already headed home and there isn't really a show, I wanted Saturday night to be, like, a big show-stopping number. And, uh, oh, today I ended up listening to music for inspiration and uh i ended up picking two songs that are just going to Mwah! oh it's so perfect i can't wait for you guys to see it uh, a little behind the scenes information about writing there are many different ways to structurally break down a story um, the model i tend to use is the three act model so you have Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Uh, but there's also a division smack dab in the middle of Act 2 called the midpoint. And the midpoint is where the nature of the story or the stakes changes. For example, in Rose City Swing Murder Mystery in 2018, the midpoint is when I decided to kill off the prime suspect of the murders, the one that Brad, the detective, had pegged as the murderer for the first half of the story. So for his prime suspect to suddenly fall victim to the actual murderer, that was crazy entertaining. I think my absolute favorite picture from that event is Brad holding Forrest 
this prime suspect slash newest murder victim in his arms and like closing his eyes. Last year for Swinging in the Rain, instead of recreating um, the film Singing in the Rain, I decided to uh, take inspiration from Mel Brooks' comedy and later musical The Producers. And so I made it Brad <laughs> had been blackmailed into turning Rose City's swing, Swinging in the Rain, into a flop. And so that's his primary goal. So he purposefully hired actors who are terrible. But Robert, Brandy, and Debra are mad because they've been snubbed for a production that they really should be involved in. So they decide to go around Brad's back when they find out he's trying to make a flop on purpose and turn it into a success. So the big midpoint switch in Swinging in the Rain was when uh, Brad sends his three performers behind the curtain to get ready for a dry run of Good Morning. And then you hear these like punching sounds and it's what is implied is Robert Brandy and Deborah are behind the curtain knocking out those performers and replacing them with their own. And then the music comes on and uh, Nick and Brian and Mia come out and they do, and they did, like they did an incredible rendition of Good Morning. And that for our protagonist, Brad, even though he's like trying to do a bad thing, like we understand why he's being blackmailed. Um, he has a big problem. Suddenly his show is going to be a success and he's going to lose everything. So that was the big midpoint switch last year. With Rose City Swing 2020, happiest event on earth. Fairy tale theme. Some of the greatest songs in that genre are sung by the villains, right? And those are the most fun. Like the hero songs, and the love songs and all the other songs, like they're great, they're iconic. I'm going to include references to those. But the ones that are just fun and are a guilty pleasure and would just bring the house down are the villain songs. So um, what I wanted to do this year was to focus the midpoint or the finale of act two, Saturday night, um, at Rose City Swing, because I am limited in time, Act 2 and the Midpoint kind of all become one thing. So, um, whereas if I were trying to write a full script, the Midpoint and the finale of Act 2 would be two separate things. Um, at Rose City Swing, I kind of build it all up into one thing. I wanted the Midpoint of Act 2 for this year to focus around the villains and uh, the, the escalation that has happened in the story indicating that they're winning, which is kind of what happened last year. But uh, for me to tell you how it's actually different this year would be too much of a spoiler and I don't want to ruin the fun for anybody. So anyways, finale of act two. I wanted to be a villain song and I've got two villains. And so I spent my half an hour today basically listening to all of the uh, songs I put together in a playlist that were sung by villains and just listening to them. So it was me basically auditioning songs to see which ones would be great. And uh, A, I was really enjoyable and relaxing based on how tired I am. Um, and B, I found them. Like, it's like they, it was meant to be. It's perfect. I have one song for each villain. I'm going to end up cutting them together in like a mashup and it's going to be so good. I'm so excited. Once again, the timer trick did the trick. I didn't work myself to the bone, even though I'm tired and don't have that much energy, but I made meaningful progress on the project. So yay win-win now i have to go cook lots of food if you like this video please give it a thumbs up down below and if you like me and my shenanigans 
I know I'm a little tired today, but hopefully that won't be the case next time. Please subscribe to my channel. Again, I'll leave a link below to my free guide, Writing Coach in Your Pocket, to help you through writer's block, if you're interested. Otherwise, I'll be back next week with yet another one of these Get Ready to Create With Me's. I'm curious to try it on some other stuff, so maybe I'll talk about planning. Because planning is gross, but it needs to be done. And it's a way of getting ready to do work, so maybe I'll talk about that. Or <laughs> I will continue using this to help me get forward traction on Rose City Swing. So um, I hope you have an awesome day. Now it's your turn. Go get ready and uh, create something. Talk to you later. Bye. I think I'm getting better at looking at like the actual lens instead of the, the take video button on the phone screen because that's like big and bright and it draws my attention. You. Not you, you, not you, you, not you. But all the time, my eyes want to go to not you. What do I want to say? I make this face a lot. I'm like a Muppet. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Why do I keep saying welcome back? I, I want to stop saying that. Welcome without the back. If you're not sure what that is, I did a longer spiel about it in last week's video, which I will link up above. I'm hoping this is where it is. That was a lot of words. I don't need to say that much. Nah. Um, is it on that side? Or is it on this side? It might be this side. Above somewhere. This is taking forever. Do I know what I want to say? Does it matter? Do I have anything to say? Do I have anything to say? Oh, it's gonna be a lot of standing. I don't want to do it. Hopefully I won't chop off my thumb. Mm.